Alright, hey guys, what's up? This is Pants Art Dragon, and today I want to be talking about Wukong Jungle, a jungler I picked up again recently, and there's only one main reason why I started picking them up again. But first, let's talk about why we kind of uh, let go of them and never played them in Season 5 again, and only in Season 4. So, one of the reasons why Wukong was so good in Season 4 was because of the Spirit of the Elder Lizard. This gave him sustain in the jungle, and when I say sustain, I mean health sustain, so he can just basically do camp and heal off it. This is also the season where you can start 5 health pots, which made him apply early game pressure and get a few ganks when he was like level 3 to 4. And they're actually pretty strong because it's almost like a Shaco gank, but unlike Shaco, Wukong is not useless. But early game pressure on Wukong, I felt was something big, and he needed to do something in early game, otherwise he was kind of useless. And basically farmed until he's level 6. Now I can't really do that, because I start with 2 health pots, and after my first clear, I probably have to back. Or keep farming the jungle and do a full clear. This style did not suit me, and I just felt useless in the early game. So I dropped him as a champion, and started playing other champions. But with the recent innovation of the double jungle strategy, this allows me to have about 1 health pot and full hit point after getting level 3. In which case, I can apply early game pressure and get some ganks off. So yeah, I'm back to my season 4 playstyle, where I'm just running around the map stealthing and jumping monkeys on people. So I can get 1 or 2 ganks before I recall because of this double jungle. Wukong also has really good synergy with the Stalker's Blade, as he doesn't have any form of CC besides his ultimate, and in the early game, this is what he's going to need since he already has a gap closer. And again, it also has synergy with his ultimate. I know some Wukongs go Trailblazer, but that's for pussies. Real monkeys go Stalker's Blade. There's also a recent surge of a bunch of Yasuo's appearing in solo queues, so this is a good thing because these two characters complement each other so well. As you know, Wukong's ultimate, Yasuo's ultimate, Black Cleaver, physical damage coming from Yasuo, and when you get this combo off, shit's gonna go down, and you're probably gonna win the fight. He's also really good against melee comps, so if you're facing Riven, if you're facing Aurelia, well, guess what, if they wanna get to your carries, they're gonna have to get past you and your ultimate. Oh yeah, and Aurelia's passive, useless against knockups, right? But he's really bad against knockbacks like Alistair, Janna, and never pick him into Lee Sin because that just straight up counters him so hard with his E, Q, and R. But thank god there's like a low surge of Lee Sins and there's like other better champions to play than him. He also scales really well into the mid game and late game, so he can throw a bit, lose a team fight, get caught somewhere. But that's fine because you're Wukong and you scale nicely. The reason he scales so good is because his ultimate never falls off as it does scale with base AD and all of his other abilities do have high base damage. He also has a really good passive for a bruiser. Probably like, honestly one of the best. Like, he gets 40 armor and magic just if he's by 5 champions which is pretty common in team fights. This is also one of the reasons why he can build a lot of damage before going tank. And fun fact, Shivana gets 40 armor and magic just at level 16. So he's getting Shivana's bonus armor and magic just when she's in dragon form. And the best part about Wukong is he can carry. Oh yes, he's really good at carrying games because he's building some AD. And he's also going to be pretty tanky while building that AD because of his passive. You're also going to be super strong in team fights, that's why he's good in mid game and late game, so he can easily carry these team fights. Alright, so let's go on to masteries and runes and all that stuff. For masteries, I go 21-9, I get one point in Warlord because I'm building some AD. For runes, I go Armor Pen Reds, Armor Yellows, CDR Blues, and AD Quints. For item build, I go Stalker's Blade Warrior, Merc Treads or Ninja Tabi depending on the game, Black and Nose Cleaver always, Dead Man's Plate to build up the momentum to gap close into teamfights much easier, Banshee's Veil just for enemy magic damage. You can also go Hexstringer slash Maw of Malmortius, and by this time, the AD carry is probably doing a lot of damage, so... Reduce the damage with the Randuins. With this build, Moons and Masteries, you will get 40% CDR, so you don't have to worry about that. And for skill order, you go E, then W, then Q, then you start maxing out R over E over Q over W. In conclusion, Wukong is definitely a strong jungler in my opinion. He's actually in my champion pool and in my personal top 3 junglers. Is he going to be top 5 junglers? Uh, probably not. I feel like a lot of people might disagree with me here. But, like, in my honest opinion, I feel like he's better than Nidalee. But not better than Elise or Evelyn. Skarner, maybe, but... Yeah, he's definitely in my top 3 champion pool. I really like him, and yeah. Season 4, Monkey King is back. I know it's going to be very hard to coordinate a double jungle with the top laner in, like, silver, gold, and bronze. But I guess you can get Elise from your bot lane and do that way not that efficient. I feel like double jungle is more efficient, but you get the point. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the Monkey King if you decide to try him in the jungle and what your opinion on him is, and I will see you guys next time.